Merciful and compassionate Father, we confess our sins and we humbly come to you to find forgiveness and life. We come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 virus that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death. Restore our hope and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. Bless our efforts to use the medicines developed to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health and mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all these through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with each one of you. And And with your spirit. We come at this point in time really to our Lenten season. And it's a a call to to be renewed as God's people. We were invited to center in on the core values of what we stand for. So it, in a sense, the readings today, it's not surprising to see faith emphasized. The Deuteronomy gives us the faith of Israel, Paul, the Christian faith. And then in the gospel, we watch how faith is tested. Jesus lives out his faith in God as a model for what we are to be and to do. So as we come before the Lord this morning, we open our hearts to his mercy and his grace. We constantly have to remember where there is so much suffering going on, especially in Ukraine and Myanmar, and realize that the cross is very present in our world in so many places. We ask the Lord as we intercede for, or ask as we ask for his forgiveness and healing, we also ask for the forgiveness and healing of all those that somehow are still far from where he is. We take a moment to ask the Lord's pardon. Lord, we have sinned against you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your mercy and love and grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant through this yearly observance of Holy Lent that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ and be worthy and and be worthy to pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people, saying, The priest shall receive the basket from you and shall set it in front of the altar of the Lord your God. Then you shall declare before the Lord your God, My father was a wandering Aramean who went down to Egypt with a small household and lived there as an alien. But there he became a nation, great, strong, and numerous. When the Egyptians maltreated and oppressed us, imposing hard labor upon us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our fathers, and he heard our cry, and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. He brought us out of Egypt with his strong hand and outstretched arm, with terrifying power, with signs and wonders, and bringing us into this country. He gave us this land flowing with milk, and honey. Therefore, I have now brought you the first fruits of the products of the soil, which you, O Lord, have given me. And having set them before the Lord your God, you shall bow down in his presence. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Be with me, Lord, when I am in trouble. Be with me, Lord, when I am in trouble. You who dwell in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, say to the Lord, my refuge and fortress, my God in whom I trust. Be with me, Lord, when I am in trouble. No evil shall befall you, nor shall affliction come near your tent. For to his angels he has given command about you, that they guard you in all your ways. Be with me, Lord, when I am in trouble. 
Upon their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the asp and the viper. You shall trample down the lion and the dragon. Be with me, Lord, when I am in trouble. Because he clings to me, I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he acknowledges my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in distress. I will deliver him and glorify him. Be with me, Lord, when I am in trouble. The second reading is from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, what does Scripture say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we preach. For if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. For the scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, enriching all who call upon him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Verse before the gospel. One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Jesus returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the desert for 40 days to be tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and when they were over, he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, one does not live on bread alone. And the devil took him up on a, uh, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a single instant. He said to him, I shall give to you all this power and glory, for it has been handed over to me, and I may give it to whomever I wish. All this will be yours, if you worship me. Jesus said to him in reply, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God. With him alone you shall serve. Then the demon led him to Jerusalem, made him stand on the parapet of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you. And with their hands they will support you, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said in reply, it also says, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every temptation, he departed from him for a time. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We really have uh, two parallel temptation scenes in St. Matthew and in St. Luke. Uh, Matthew kind of picks up the idea of Israel's temptations in the desert as they were coming out in the Exodus. Um, but uh, for Luke, the temptations are more the messianic trials of Jesus. Uh, Luke gives us an overview of the kinds of trials Jesus faced as a human person. The one called to be God's Messiah did not simply roll through without any troubles. 
it's a brilliant summing up of the pattern, the pattern that, that turns all of us either away from God or to the Lord. The temptations in Luke are a kind of a progression. They go through what you might want to say are the three P's, the P's of possession, power, pride. The possession, the first one, what we need, bread. The ordinary things in life we do without really going beyond them. But there's more to life than eating, clothing, housing, as important as those things are. We can get immersed in things and miss, miss the depth of the spirit that we are called to really embody, wonder, compassion, appreciation, values, principles. These go beyond those basics. Reduced to simply the basics, we're like animals. We have food, we sleep, sex, work, entertainment. And even worse, in our times, in a consumer society, there are so many things we feel we cannot live without. We fill ourselves with needs that are not really necessary, but which trap us. Materials, gadgets that we use. Think of all the people that walk around just looking at a cell phone all day long. People, time wasted. Whatever people let their hearts get wrapped up in, they become like thorns that grow up and choke the seed, soak off the life of the seed. And then comes power, control, self-exaltation. These often follow for those who have a lot. They have to protect, to show everyone else that they are important. And Satan shows Jesus the kingdoms of the world in one well, with all their splendor in one vision. And for us, those could be really whatever are really the things that hold us. Family, sometimes, our social context, whatever, whatever leads us to honors, respect, people looking up to us. Make a name for yourself. Be famous. Be number one. We hear that so often. So what? You end up, they give you a big thing in the paper and a big tomb, and there you rest. There's a story from Alexander the Great who ordered that as he was being led to his burial, they should not wrap up his hands in a burial cloth. He said, let everyone see them. Let everyone see that they're empty. Alexander was born into one empire and he conquered another. He possessed, while he was alive, both worlds, the East and the West, and all their treasures. And yet dead, he could not retain even the smallest portion of them. The poorest beggar and the great Alexander were in the end on equal basis. And then the third one, so, possess so possessions, power, prestige, pride, where we blow our self-image up so much and we take over from God. We take over and become the ones who want to control God. We tell God what life is supposed to be. Remember in the Genesis story of Adam and Eve, the Satan, the serpent tells them, you will be like God's. God has to respond to our decisions, our prayers, so that we, we try to manipulate God and we get kind of annoyed when God doesn't simply follow what we, what we want. It's a very false view. It's very self-destructive. I think Lent is a time to, to set our vision straight. We're invited by the church to to walk closer with Christ, with Jesus, as he goes to Jerusalem, as he goes to the cross and resurrection. And, and when you look at it, how does Jesus 
react to those three P's, possessions, power, and pride. First, there's simplicity, even poverty. He does pray for daily bread, but you notice he does that only after focusing on our Father, your kingdom come. It's God first. Needs are put in the context of the more important things. The higher calling to, to be fully human, not just the animal part of ourselves. We think of how many parents have hurt their kids by <clears throat> giving all kinds of material things that they need, but neglecting the more important things like time, love, encouragement, the rest. There's more to life than bread. And by clinging, we close ourselves off. By opening, we let ourselves open to receive so much more. And then we look at Jesus' power. He's humble. He's obedient. He doesn't try to control and look for honors for himself. He is a man of service not being served. For Jesus, it's others, not self. Lots of compassion. Jesus is a servant who lays down his life for his brothers and sisters, who does not seek to control, but to carry, and who shows us what really in life bears fruit. And then finally, pride, no, he is a man who is God-centered, not self-oriented. On the cross, he puts himself into his father's hands as he did his whole life. Not my will, but yours be done. He emptied himself like a slave, Paul says in Philippians. What a waste, the world would say. How could there be a more utter sign of failure and lack of power. And yet God shows us this is what leads to life. So the passion and death of Christ were only possible because he had these attitudes all through his life, all along. The real test would come at the cross, and that's why you notice at the end of the gospel, the, Luke tells us that this, uh, Satan leaves him for a while, for a time. Well, he'd come back. He'd come back and the final trial would be the hardest. But Jesus lived a life in the Spirit and will always be the Son committed to the mission of his Father. I remember when I was a kid, long, long time ago, there was a movie with Burt Lancaster in it, a court scene, a trial scene. And... Uh, Bert said something like, you know, uh, it takes a, he brought up a piece of glass. And he says, you put that glass up and we see the world through it. You put silver at the back of that glass and all you see is yourself. Lent, I think, is a time to clarify the glass to look with the eyes of Christ and to grow with him towards what truly leads to life, his simplicity, his humility, his obedience, his commitment to God and the ways of God. We want to walk with Jesus during Lent to rediscover what is real, what is the way, the truth, and the life that he brings us. It's so often clouded over by the world's version of it. His poverty and freedom, rather than our own possessing and being possessed, detaching ourselves from whatever bread might be for us. His service and carrying others rather than controlling them. His charity, his concern, the good works that flow out of these. And then his humility, his humility so far from the world's false pride, the prayer and listening that opens us up to 
where God is in our lives so that we may really turn to him and be saved. It's like the buds that are warmed by the sun's light and discover in themselves the power to burst forth in the flowers of new life in springtime. That's the season in many parts of the world during Lent and Easter, spring, the coming back of light and life to the world. And we hope that really in our own Lenten observance and our desire to stay with the Lord, that we may grow in the deeper appreciation and reception of that life and light in our lives as well. We continue our Mass, and first of all, we renew our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator, creator of, of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, Lord who was conceived, conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended, he descended into hell. hell. On, the On the third day, he rose again from the dead. dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Heavenly Father, renew us in your covenant of mercy that leads us to everlasting life. With humble hearts we pray, Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. May the church leaders find strength in the Christ in the desert whenever they are tempted to live a life against the gospel, we pray. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. May the civil leaders be empowered by your love, O Lord, so that they may use material and spiritual gifts for common good, we pray. Lord, graciously hear us. As we go through this pandemic, may we courageously witness to Jesus Christ through faith-inspired works of peace, justice, love, and compassion, we pray. Lord, graciously hear us. May those who are preparing for baptism and reception into the Catholic Church be guided by the spirit of wisdom and peace, we pray. Lord, graciously hear us. May those who called upon your name in faith, O Father, during their earthly journey, hear the voice of Christ welcoming them into the joy of heaven, we pray. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. For those celebrating their birthdays, Al Panlilio, Chit Kuo, Marisa Diego, Father Steve Zabala, Maria Teresa Evangelista, Ana Mangahas, Kirby Halandoni, Min San Juan, and Ross Capili, we pray. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. us. For the healing of Emily Quaso and Linda Docdossil, we pray. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. us. For the repose of the souls of Victor Vitug, Leopoldo Valcarcel Jr., and Charlie Coanco, we pray. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. us. For the special <clears throat> intentions of Benjamin Barreto, Lisi Puno, and family, and Father Danny Cedro, the sight of Jesus, we pray. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. hear us. And for all the intentions sent to our Facebook pages at Jescom and Radio Katipunan, we pray. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. Hear us. <clears throat> we continue to pray also for the suffering people of Ukraine. We pray for those suffering in Myanmar especially, and there are many other places, but we raise those up to the Lord's goodness and mercy and strength. For them we pray. Lord, graciously hear us. Father, through the Spirit, you, had, you led Jesus into the desert to prepare him for his mission of mercy. Lead us by that same Spirit during these Lent, this Lenten journey that we may be spiritually prepared to celebrate the resurrection. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer from our earth. May it become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. May it become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, we pray that you give us the right dispositions to make these offerings. For with them we celebrate the beginning of this wonderful and venerable time. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, always, everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By abstaining 40 long days from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance. And by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, he taught us to cast out the, the leaven of malice, so that celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal feast. And so with all the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise without end as we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are indeed holy, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never stop gathering a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. And so, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we bring to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Again, he gave you thanks, said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples and said, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new, the eternal covenant. It will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. And so, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection, his ascension into heaven, as we look forward to the second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray on the offering of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son 
and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. <clears throat> may he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, the apostles and martyrs, and all the saints in whose constant, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Esther, our Bishop, the bishops, the clergy, the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of the family you gather this morning. In your merciful compassion, Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. For our departed brothers and sisters and everyone who was pleasing to you at his or her passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. As God's holy people, then we turn to our loving Father and pray with the faith and trust that Jesus himself had and chose us to have. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Grant us peace in our days, so that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity that you so much want, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with each one of you. And with your spirit. And offer each other a sign of that peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. This is Jesus, the Lord, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are invited to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that, that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart, I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. O Lord, we are renewed with the heavenly bread that nourishes faith and increases hope, strengthens charity. We pray that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and strive to live by every word that proceeds from your mouth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So thank you so much for joining and being with us in the celebration. We wish you all, everyone, a grace-filled time of Lent and growth more deeply in our understanding of the Lord and our desire to be part of what he's doing in our lives. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May bountiful blessings, O Lord, we pray, come down on your people that hope may grow in the midst of tribulation, virtue be strengthened in temptation, and eternal redemption be assured through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all always, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We go in the love and peace of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Wala si humala